Hello, I'm Malcolm Gallagher, and you're watching the BBTV Network. As they used to say, it's a funny old world. Usually a statement without any meaning, but today it's one that rings true. The world has recently moved forward 10, maybe 15 years in as many months. That move forward is not just about digital transformation. It's also about societal change or consciousness, as we call it here at BVTV. In our minds, there can only be two kinds of leaders and two kinds of businesses in the future. It's either the conscious leader of a conscious business or the unconscious leader of an unconscious business. So guess which one will last the journey to sustainability and growth? The 4P conscious agenda, as we see it at BizVision, of planet, people, profit and purpose is not always easy to grasp for today's leaders and today's suppliers. But many are making the effort to do so, thanks to my guest today and his brilliantly creative wife. Purpose is key and social value wraps around it. So let's explore more as from Cohen's books we meet Mr Yorkshire himself, Canon Keith Maidley MBE. Hello, Keith. Hello to you too, Malcolm. Good to be with you. Uh, yeah, well, we're not far away. We're in Northumberland and you're in Yorkshire. It's different. Not, but where's this Mr. Yorkshire come from? Well, I was chairing a small digital marketing agency. That's about 2007, Malcolm. And one of the founders came in one day and he said, you do so much to promote Yorkshire. We've bought you this domain name, MrYorkshire.com. And my you know, original response was, I said, I can't use that. People think it was, they think he is. Yeah. You can and you will. The website was done and uh, the rest, as they say, is history. So that's um, about 14 years ago, Malcolm. Oh, well, uh, as my wife comes from Yorkshire, from Bradford, uh, I better go and buy her Mrs. Yorkshire there and uh, see so uh, what happens we do, there. We do actually, yeah, we do actually own Mrs. Yorkshire. All oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> Chris said to me, don't you dare call me Mrs. Yorkshire. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Keith, I wanted you as a guest on BBTV, as I want my viewers and listeners to get a eureka moment about their challenge on the subject of social value. You're helping companies not just pay lip service to their responsibilities to the act, but to do real and lasting good. Viewers and listeners, I'll be talking to Keith in three parts. After he's introduced himself and told you what Cohn's books are about, I'll ask him in part one to take us through one of the books commissioned by a company and talk about how it meets that company's social value objectives. In part two, I'll ask him how he guides sponsors down the right path and not just let them jump on the bandwagon. And in part three, I'm going to ask him to tell us a success story. But Keith, before we get into our three-part talk, can you briefly introduce yourself to my viewers and listeners? Who are Keith and Chris Maidley? And what are the Cones books about? And who are they for? Delighted to, Malcolm. Um, Chris and I uh, owned a uh, financial services company based in Leeds. Um, and in the 1990s, we opened a branch at Bush near Watford, near London. And we were up and down the motorway supporting that particular office, M1A1. And everybody, but everybody was cursing traffic cones. Mm. New junctions being built on the M1. And you may recall Prime Minister John Major of the day actually brought out the cones hotline. And you could <laughs> ring this number to tell you where the cones were. <laughs> you think Terry Wogan also used to talk about it cones is, yeah. on his radio show. And um, Chris rang this number one day. The guys burst out laughing this week. Yeah, roughly a call a fortnight, madam. Good to hear from you. And she put the phone down. We we're stuck at junction 21A. And she said, I'm going to bring these little characters to life when a human eye is not looking. And they will learn about human behavior. And that's how it started, Malcolm. Brilliantly, brilliantly. And so tell us about the Cones books then. Well, we in 2014, we found our publisher. Um, and literally when we spoke to him about the, the books and shown him some of the uh, drawings and uh, some of the storylines. His words were, "I in seconds, I loved it. So um, that we started in 2014. Uh, the first book uh, was Meet the Cones, How They Come Alive, a little bit of magic. Um, obviously, when a human eye is not looking, they are, that's when they come alive. So if you look at them, you and I now, they're just traffic cones. Mm. But they're learning about human behaviour. There are four main characters, Conrad, Constance, Convera, and Conan. Conan's the naughty one. And uh, they, uh, we, have, we have a storyline. So the first one is how they come alive, a little bit of magic. Um, 
in, in that particular book, there's only two, uh, Constance and Conrad. But in book two, Meet the Cones, so those, it's probably better to read those two together. Mm. The other two characters, Cone Vera and Conan, uh, join them. And from there on, book three onwards, every book stands alone, uh, its own message, and it's always the four characters. Right. So I'm, like I'm guessing that I'm guessing that they're aimed at children, uh, obviously. But what age group is is the optimum? Right. The the age group is probably uh, four to about nine, ten. Um, right. Children nursery understand them if parents read the uh, the books to them. You know, bedtime story. Um, certainly, ideal age is six, seven. Uh, we're now touching on careers. We've been asked to do that by both companies and schools particularly encouraging children into construction and engineering, and particularly girls. Uh, we've just um, finished the book 13, which will be published shortly, with Balfour Beatty. And the head of social value, a charming lady, Cherie, um, she said when she wanted to look at her career, I, I want to be a civil engineer. And mm -hmm. her father said to her, Malcolm, over my dead body, <laughs> yeah. what a thing to say to her. I, I want know. you to be a doctor, accountant, lawyer. Yeah. Anyway, she started uh, teaching and then she's now head of social value for the North, for Balfour BT. And she's passionate about getting young people, in, particularly girls, into construction because there are so many, such a variety mm. of jobs for, for children. Yeah. 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 I'm, I'm totally with you. Keith, let's start part one. So, can you take us through one of the books commissioned by a company and talk about how the book meets that company's social value objectives? And what's the story being told by them through the book? Yeah, uh, probably book. Uh, they're, they're, all, they're all pretty good uh, bestsellers with companies, but we'll talk about Cones on Side. Uh, this is a construction company in Yorkshire, very well known, called Caddy Construction, uh, still added up by... Paul Caddick and his son Johnny. And uh, they thought this was a brilliant idea. In fact, when I went to see them initially, they said, oh, we will have a word with our uh, trade body. You'll have heard probably, Malcolm, of considerate constructors yep. about yeah. this. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure they'll love it. Anyway, by the time I got home, they rang me and said, we've decided initially we'll do it ourselves and then we'll put it to considerate constructors. Um, so they, they found that when they get to a development site, and they probably operate over most of north of England, um, and there's obviously traffic cones go up, and people in the area, oh, no, traffic jams, et cetera, et cetera. So they thought, if we actually have a book which explains the dangers to children on a building site, mm. but actually then give those books, or, or indeed even go in, to talk to schools about what we're doing on the building site, this will really help. And, and it has really helped. Um, they rang me last year, and a sadly, a little boy in Glasgow of 10 died uh, oh. by trespassing on a building site. So they decided to use the book um, and say, can we use it as a, a safety competition to encourage children to do some drawings from the storyline? And we said, of course. And, and that, that went down really, really well. And that company, over the last four years, have actually bought 7,000 books to give out to schools, and which wow. is great. Yeah, yeah. And, and they've really demonstrated that, that titling of considerate constructors, haven't they? Well, what they then went on to do, Malcolm, they submitted it to considerate constructors. And if any of your uh, listeners, um, viewers, uh, look on that website, it does sit under best practice. Uh, for uh, safety on building sites for children. Wow. Well, so go and look at construct, uh, considerateconstructors.co.uk, is it? Yeah, I think it is. Consider Constructors, if you just put that into Google, it, it will come up. And um, it's not an easy website, but it's on there. Excellent, <laughs> excellent. Okay, that. and the best practice. Good. Keith, before we move to part two, I'd just like to remind viewers and listeners of your website URL, your website address, Now, which is, and obviously, um, viewers, you can see it on the screen behind me, but for listeners, let me read that out. It's all the W's, dot, the cones, C-O-N-E-S, books.co.uk. All the W's, theconesbooks.co.uk. Keith, time for part two. Now, I know 
uh, we've talked before, you're a man of purpose and integrity. And I guess it's important to rigorously guard the reputation of Cohn's books to avoid anybody exploiting them. How do you guide sponsors down the right path and not let, just let them jump on the bandwagon? How do you help them live their book? Right. <clears throat> when we um, get someone interested, and uh, as I say, we're covering everything you can think of now, conservation, sustainability, recycling, uh, saving the planet. Um, there's so many titles for children, Malcolm. Mm. We say, right, what are the messages that you want to get over to that audience? And um, we'll usually take up to four or five messages. Chris will then do all the, re re uh, the research with the company uh, so she can write the story. She writes the story. And then that goes back to the sponsor so that it's factually correct. It, mu it must be right. And, um, and then from there, it goes to illustration. Um, the illustrators have got some fantastic illustrators. They produce what's called then the storyboard with the <coughs> rough drawings so that the uh, sponsor can make sure that, yeah, that's great. Words fit with the, the actual illustrations. And then uh, the book is fully illustrated, completed and signed off. We then encourage the sponsor uh, to do um, a really interesting launch appropriate to uh, their business. For instance, Grand Central Rail, they hired the Railway Museum at York. And we, uh, they also decided to put their, their character, which was Cone Coast Controller, bit of a play on the cone words, yeah. uh, on one of their um, get trains. And I used to get telephone calls from people Hey, have I seen one of your wife's cones uh, uh, on a train <laughs> uh, shot through Doncaster? Things like that, Malcolm. Yeah, oh, lovely. Um, so, yeah, so we had a train naming ceremony with that. But it's very important at the launch. We're talking to Balfour Beach and we're looking at launching that book at the Leeds College of Building. Mm -hmm. And the principal just said, what a great idea. Um, obviously, uh, encouraging youngsters to look at construction, civil engineering. And hopefully they will then end up in his college. So th there's a nice little working with the relative parties to make sure that um, uh, every everybody is aware of the book. Excellent. I, I love the story. Love that, Keith. Now, Keith, time for part three. And it's time for more storytelling. After all, that's what the Cones book's about, aren't they? Uh, let's go behind the social value aspect and tell us a success story from a particular book and sponsor one that makes you and Chris feel very proud of your work. Uh, <clears throat> this is a difficult one, Malcolm, because there are so many. I think probably, I've mentioned Cones on site. I'll move to Cones in the Roadworks. Now, this is the second book sponsored by Eurovia. And indeed, um, some of our sponsors, Bam Nuttall, are now on their third book. But um, Eurovia, the first, book, the, the first one they sponsored was uh, Cones Make New Friends. And that covers uh, getting them off the motorway, um, being careful in the motorway uh, car park, service station car park. But they said we, they were finding, and this is coming up time and time again, Malcolm, I see on uh, a newsletter called Safe Highways, more and more problems with uh, members of the public, not just verbally insulting the workforce yeah. at Roadworks, but physically. Yeah. And they, they told us the story of um, a guy. So whenever there's a roadblock, there's always someone there to stop the motorists. Mm -hmm. uh, or indeed, if somebody's living just down the road, they let through. Guy turned up in a Range Rover and the guy said, I'm sorry, you know, you can't come through. Uh, the road's blocked because they are replacing the bridge further down over the river. You know what to do. He, he kicked the sign away got in his Range Rover and went straight towards the site. So the little guy's running after him saying, you can't go, you can't go. As he got to the uh, river, of course, he could see there was no bridge. It was being replaced. So the guy said, look, I've told you, you can't get across. The guy got out of his uh, Range Rover, thumped the workman and drove off. And, That's uh, disgusting. Is, That's disgusting. Uh, absolutely disgusting. So Eurovia said, can you do a, a book highlighting that problem? And Chris said, yes, of course I can. And um, they took the two of us. I tend to go with it just to, uh, for, out of an interest point of view, but then mm. we can obviously compare notes. Uh, and they took us around three 
roadwork sites, three different sites, explained what happened. It was absolutely fascinating. And she wrote the book and absolutely delighted with it. Uh, Yoruba is a French company and uh, they told me the other day they're putting forward a submission to go to head office uh, to see how they can promote this and perhaps other uh, books on different subjects for children. Mm. And uh, on Twitter, uh, it, was, it was a few months back, all of a sudden uh, I picked up the, this post and there a 30 said, uh, our senior managers throughout the UK were in a room, some were sat on chairs, some stood up behind them and every one had the book, Cones in the Roadworks in the Hand. I said to her, Chris, you should be so proud that yeah. this company, a big international company, have taken your book so seriously. Yeah. And I just hope that Range Rover driver um, has a daughter or a little son who reads the book and says, Daddy, this is, you know, yeah. <laughs> embarrass like, embarrass him. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, Keith, I, I, you know, we see a similarity to that story about sadly what's been going on about after uh, the Wembley match on Sunday. Um, we see that sadly what's been going on about all those brilliant NHS people who have helped us through COVID. Um, yeah. You know, uh, you, this societal change that I was talking about at the very beginning um, has become quite frightening. And it's great to see the work that, that you and Chris are doing. I said at the beginning that many businesses were struggling with the Social Value Act to grasp its purpose and see how they can deliver on that purpose. And you've seen today that a little lateral thinking and some help from Keith and Chris Maidley can help you become that sustainable Conscious Business. Thanks, Keith, for an inspiring interview. Thank you very much, Mark. It's been an absolute pleasure.